God bless you and good morning. You've arrived to double digits. Guess what? Today is day 10 of our consecrated life building 40 day devotional. This is our commentary. I pray that the first nine days have been rewarding because that's what God wants it to be. I pray that you have been refreshed in the presence of the Lord. Now I want to give you this quick tip. Doing something 21 days consecutively, it causes there to become a habit. Causes there to become a habit. And I want you consecutively every day, start getting up early, start spending that time with God, okay? Because you're not the same. Listen, you are not the same. We are not our own. We're bought with a price and God did not pay such a price to giving his son. And the son didn't give his life for us to stay like we were. So beloved, I want to thank God for you. Oh, I want to thank God for soon coming haircuts and, and shades <laughs> and everything else. Oh, the Lord is so good. I got some gray. I don't know what I'm going to do with it, but it's okay. I'm going to wash that gray right out of <laughs> Oh, but it's a sign of wisdom. <laughs> and I'm thanking God for his great grace towards us today. Listen, double digits. We're in the day 10. Welcome to day 10. Day 10 and day 11 are together. Why? Because day 10 and 11 is dealing with identifying and uprooting deception. Our focus scripture is in the book of James. I'm going to give you a chance to turn to James chapter 1. James chapter 1. Our focus scripture is in the book of James because, beloved, we want to uproot today. We want to uproot as we identify. So today, my God, beloved, we're going to begin to identify deception, where areas of deception are in our lives, and then we're going to uproot it, all right? So two-day process, identifying and uprooting, identifying and uprooting. Now, before we go to James, I want to define deception. Deception is anything less than God's word that we have adopted as truth. Simple definition, anything less than God's word that we have adopted as truth, that we live by, that we believe is true, that we um, allow ourselves to follow uh, as something that is true when actually it is not. That is deception. Deception comes in many forms. Deception comes in the forms of relationships where people don't actually want your best. Deception comes in the form of words spoken to you where people don't always mean your best. And you can count on this statement. Deception always comes from the enemy. Always. He is a deceiver, a liar. That is his main tool. And he's the master deceiver. I'm not praising him. We have to identify who the enemy is, know his strengths. He has more weaknesses and strengths, believe it or not. But his major strength is deception or lies. And he, the Bible calls him the father of lies. Hear this real quick, all right? Let hit this head on, shall we? How many of us ever heard or believed the long-standing statement, it always gets worse before it gets better? It's from the book, okay? Where in the Bible is this? I never read that. I realize that the word declares in Matthew that before the end comes, we're going to shall abound. However, does that apply to every situation? Hmm. How about this one? Let's all join in a moment of silent prayer. <laughs> Since prayer is communication and conversation with God, while God knows all, do we communicate silently or by telepathy? Do we hold conversations or communicate under normal conditions without moving our mouth? I could go on, but I think that you get the point. There are many popular views and colloquialisms that folk adopt as truth with no basis of truth or in truth. Many use it what they heard or quite simply feel to develop standards to live by or the measure by which one likes another, deals with another, or seeks to separate. Oh, my God. Listen, James chapter 1, James chapter 1, deception, adopting something is true less than the word of God. Again, James chapter 1. Oh, my God. Let's start at verse 19. James chapter 1, verse 19, our focus scripture. So then, my beloved brethren, and I read from the New King James, let every man be swift to hear, slow to speak, slow to wrath. For the wrath of man does not produce the righteousness of God. Therefore, 
lay aside all filthiness and overflow of wickedness and receive with meekness the implanted word which is able to save your soul, your mind, your will, your imagination, your emotions, and your intellect, your soul. But be doers of the word and not hearers only, deceiving yourselves. For if anyone is a hearer of the word and not a doer, he is like a man observing his natural face in the mirror. For he observes himself, goes away, and immediately forgets what kind of man he saw or was. But he who looks into the perfect law of liberty and continues in it, and is not a forgetful hearer, but a doer of the work, this one will be blessed in what he does. I want you to be blessed in what you do. I want you to be not only a hearer, but a doer. Doing affirms what you hear when it comes to God's word. Doing affirms what you hear in your life. It not only affirms it, it confirms it. Don't waste your time just hearing God's word. I see many people take notes, you know, and stand up in the worship and, and go about, you know, getting the deep face, you know, you know, <laughs> breaking their mug and they take notes, but not everybody lives by the notes they take. Sometimes we can hear a good thing and we can write it down for someone else and say, ah, that's for Susie. She need this, but you know, we need it too. So today is the day to start identifying areas that you're hearing the word, but you're not applying it. Can we do that today? I know that's not something that's easy, but this is not designed to be easy. This is designed to help us live our best life. So join me today. Today is day number 10 in identifying and beginning the process of uprooting all deception. We'll be back with this tomorrow. Enjoy the day. And don't you let the enemy make you think this is too much work. He's a liar and the father of lies. God bless.